Located in San Jose, California, the Winchester Mystery House is known for being haunted. Apparently, it is said that the ghosts drove her mad and she spent the rest of her life building the Winchester house to confuse them? But what if I told you that this wasn't the case and the stories you've heard about it were all false? The rumors spread to such an extent that people now believe them as the absolute truth. But before we begin, welcome to Tales of Titans, the place where business and history come to life. So, let's dive into the story of the Winchester Mystery House. Let's rewind to 1862 to uncover the real story of Sarah Winchester. She wed William Wirt Winchester, an heir to the Winchester Repeating Arms Company fortune. They set up their home in New Haven, Connecticut, and welcomed their only child, Annie, who sadly died shortly after birth. Shortly after, tragedy struck again, as both her husband and father-in-law passed away, leaving Sarah with a hefty inheritance of around $362,000. But instead of living a life of leisure, she made smart investments that multiply her wealth. At the age of 46, Sarah developed rheumatoid arthritis, and on her doctor's advice, she moved to a warmer climate. With fond memories of previous trips to San Francisco with her husband, she relocated to California. In 1886, a representative from the Winchester Company took her around the local area. It was in San Jose that he showed her an eight-room farmhouse situated on 45 secluded acres. Captivated by its tranquility and reminded of the Spanish countryside, Sarah purchased the home and renamed it Ianata Villa. Upon settling into her new home, Sarah invited her niece to join her and gifted her a nearby property as a wedding gift. Sarah soon became a prominent figure in the local charity community and often attended fundraisers with her niece. She became a major donor to the American Red Cross and as she acclimated to her new surroundings, Sarah began to envision what she could do with her vast property. She had thoroughly enjoyed designing her Connecticut home with William from selecting decor to working alongside architects and interior designers. She even mused that if societal norms allowed, she would have pursued a career as an architect, but the constraints of her era made such aspirations impractical. Determined to realize her architectural dreams on her own terms, Sarah initially hired two architects for her San Jose home, but dismissed them soon after, choosing instead to take the reins of the construction herself. She started drawing up plans for her ideal residence and employed a sizable staff to reside on site as the work got underway. Each morning, she would assemble her crew to outline the day's objectives and meticulously manage every aspect of the building process. As the structure expanded, Sarah frequently revised the designs, sometimes tearing down rooms to start anew if they didn't align with her vision. These continuous modifications, driven by her untrained yet passionate approach to design, resulted in an eclectic layout filled with long, narrow hallways and oddly placed rooms. Her worsening arthritis made traditional stairs difficult to navigate, prompting her to install gentler staircases that took 44 steps to ascend just 10 feet. Beyond her architectural endeavors, Sarah was a passionate gardener, maintaining an extensive collection of indoor plants. Sustainability was key for her. She engineered a sophisticated water runoff system within her home, using trap doors to ensure excess water from her plants was repurposed to irrigate her garden. This blend of creativity and conservation underscored Sarah's life, allowing her to use her wealth in profoundly personal and innovative ways. From 1886 to 1922, construction seemingly never ceased, and it was built for a total cost of $5 million in 1923, or you can say $71 million nowadays. The interior of Sarah Winchester's home vividly mirrored her distinct personality, with walls adorned with inspirational quotes and custom millwork that unified the spaces through precise geometric patterns. She also amassed an impressive collection of stained glass windows, as she acquired hundreds to enhance various rooms and continually rearranged decor to highlight these vibrant art pieces. 
Just as her expansive mansion, comprising 500 rooms, neared its completion, the devastating 1906 San Francisco earthquake struck, causing severe damage. Entire sections of her home collapsed, including a seven-story tower. At this point in her life, Sarah's health was deteriorating, and the energy required to undertake another massive redesign was beyond her capacity. She directed her team to merely clear the debris and weatherproof the damaged structure. As a result, many doors were permanently sealed, transforming into outer walls, while damaged staircases were barricaded right where they had broken. Unable to fix the intricate water drainage system she had designed for watering her indoor plants, the pipes were shut off. The earthquake had reduced her mansion by nearly two-thirds, leaving only 160 rooms intact. As Sarah's health continued to decline, her visits to town became increasingly rare, as it was too hard for her to go due to her worsening condition. Her world, much like her home, became smaller and more confined as she spent her final days within the walls of her much-diminished mansion. Sarah Winchester passed away in 1922, leaving behind no direct heirs. Generously, she bequeathed her entire estate, divided it all equally among her niece and the loyal staff who had become not just employees but close friends and helped bring her artistic visions to life. Later that year, her house found new owners, John and Mamie Brown. The Browns saw an opportunity in the growing popularity of haunted houses at that time and decided to transform the Winchester Mansion into a tourist attraction. Capitalizing on this trend, they concocted tales of supernatural occurrences and occult practices supposedly centered around Sarah Winchester, creating an intriguing yet wholly fabricated backstory for the estate. The tale of the Winchester Mystery House is a captivating blend of mirth and mystery, often centered around its enigmatic owner, Sarah Winchester. Legend has it that Sarah, the wealthy heiress of the Winchester rifle fortune, was haunted by the spirits of those killed by the very rifles that built her fortune. To elude these restless ghosts, she transformed her mansion into a bewildering maze filled with endless construction, featuring staircases leading nowhere, trapdoors opening to perilous drops, and a bell tower supposedly used to communicate with the supernatural. Her fascination with the occult drove her to hold nightly seances to appease the spirits, and she developed a peculiar obsession with the number 13, insisting on incorporating it into the windows, doors, and rooms of her sprawling estate. But the surprising part is that none of this is actually true. Neighbors and friends of Sarah Winchester initially reacted with anger to the Brown's tales of hauntings and mysticism surrounding her mansion. The portrayal of her as a recluse haunted by spirits was contrary to their memories. The story was embellished further with claims about a medium from Boston named Adam Coons, who allegedly advised Sarah to move to California to escape the spirits of those killed by Winchester rifles. However, historical records show no evidence of such a person existing or operating as a psychic in Boston during that era. The Browns also spread the notion that Sarah designed her house specifically to disorient ghosts, deliberately ignoring the significant structural changes caused by the catastrophic 1906 San Francisco earthquake. They even claimed the house featured multiple sets of 13, a number traditionally associated with superstition to maintain a theme of the occult. Tour guides at the mansion would often tell visitors that seances were held in the Blue Room, which in reality was the living quarters of the gardener. Moreover, they perpetuated the myth that the bell tower, which was used to signal shifts for the estate staff, was utilized by Sarah to summon spirits. These fabrications, built on sensationalism rather than fact, painted a false portrait of Sarah Winchester's life and intentions, turning her home into a haunted attraction based on falsified tales rather than celebrating her true legacy as an architectural enthusiast and benefactor. The storytelling prowess of the Browns proved to be remarkably effective. 
Their fabricated tales about Sarah Winchester's home inspired authors across the United States to pen fictional novels that wove even richer layers into the lore. In turn, these narratives served as evidence that bolstered the Browns' original fabrications, further entrenching their version of events in popular culture. A century later, this embellished story has reached over 12 million visitors, overshadowing the real accomplishments of Sarah Winchester. Rather than honoring her as a trailblazing woman in architecture or as a whimsical artist who provided stable employment to numerous individuals for decades, Sarah Winchester's true legacy has been obscured. Today, the narrative that persists is so steeped in myth that the genuine essence of her life and her genuine contributions have been almost entirely erased and are replaced by a ghost story that bears little resemblance to the reality of the creative, generous person she was. Well, that's all folks. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more amazing content, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.